in this case of a severely subluxed IOL capsular bag complex with vitreous present in the anterior uh, vitreous cavity, it's clear a parse plana posterior approach will be required uh, to manage the IOL subluxation. Three millimeters back, we're going to place MVR trocars, 25 gauge trocars here, in the uh, in this case in supra nasal quadrant and infra nasal quadrant. These will be used for our irrigation. Uh, as we see here, we're going to be placing a posterior infusion line. Check to make sure the infusion is in the vitreous cavity here when it's placed, and then we'll place uh, the same tw another 25 gauge uh, MVR trocar system here. Notice the tangential approach to the conjunctiva, then through the sclera tangentially, and then pointing directly perpendicular into the vitreous cavity. We're going to use a chandelier light system here. This will uh, free up our hands for vitrectomy and uh, IOL um, maneuverability. Then we're going to place here a uh, 23 gauge here for our uh, primary vitrectomy port here, again tangentially in this case in the uh, infrotemporal quadrant. So now we have three ports placed within the vitreous cavity. We're going to make a six millimeter um, corneal limbal groove here in anticipation for our corneal incision and a couple of uh, incisions here placed in the uh, peripheral cornea. Some uh, intravitreal catalog is injected to visualize vitreous, very helpful here to uh, ensure that we can visualize vitreous and then followed from with some dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea. Having the infusion placed here in the uh, posterior quadrant does certainly help to prevent uh, turbulence in the anterior chamber. We can do most of our work in the anterior vitreous. The 23-gauge uh, um, vitrectomy probe was placed into the uh, anterior vitreous Notice that we are now using um, the uh, micro-grasper to hold the capsular rexus to ensure we hold the IOL capsular bag complex. Placing the uh, probe now into the um, anterior chamber, we remove some of the anterior vitreous present anterior to the uh, lens complex here. As we see, the catalog has highlighted the vitreous quite well. We want to ensure that we uh, remove sufficient vitreous anteriorly and, of course, around the entire IOL. The goal here basically is to... Um, essentially remove a block of vitreous around the IOL, which is essentially in the anterior vitreous compartment, and uh, do this in a limited uh, vitrectomy fashion. We're going to place the um, peripheral uh, retinal viewing system here on our scope, and now we can proceed uh, with visualization behind the IOL. Again, it helps really to have that chandelier lighting system in place um, to free up uh, our alternate hand here to hold the IOL capsular bag complex. Some of the best places to hold the IOL is either at the haptic, the optic, or the capsular rexus uh, edge, as you see in this case. The uh, vitrectomy is performed uh, with minimal movement here, ensuring that the vitreous is cut and aspirated around the IOL in a very controlled fashion. The uh, previously injected kenalog helpful to visualize that vitreous that's been stained by the kenalog, and you can see we're carefully have gone posteriorly. In this case, now we're superior to the uh, capsular bag complex, slowly and uh, carefully removing. Uh, the vitreous in this area. The idea is to uh, essentially cut around the IOL, uh, essentially, essentially amputate vitreous, any potential vitreous adhesions, and free up the anterior vitreous space so we can maneuver the IOL uh, into the anterior chamber. Uh, here you can see now we're moving more toward the inferior quadrant um, and inter inferior vitreous cavity to remove vitreous here. One of the uh, goals here again really is to uh, free up and free the IOL for maneuverability. The goal here of course is not to end up going posteriorly here and this patient uh, has had a PVD, makes it easier for us, of course, to uh, manage the IOL in the vitreous cavity. Absolutely, again, important to ensure that the IOL is free uh, of any vitreous attachments, and we uh, can do this by watching um, both the stained vitreous as well as uh, observing for any movement of the IOL as the cutter is placed around uh, the IOL capsular bag complex. And you can see here we're pretty well almost uh, completed our uh, anterior vitrectomy here. This is, uh, of course, help with the posterior infusion line necessary here, as well as the um, illumination system. One can place a uh, infusion through the cornea, although that does create more turbulence uh, in the anterior chamber and distorts the cornea as well with striations. And so we find that uh, often the parse plana infusion line is helpful, even from an anterior segment perspective. We now have completed essentially the uh, anterior um, core vitrectomy here around the IOL. We can essentially now proceed to visualize um, the IOL complex, injecting some viscoelastic to keep the main anterior chamber formed, and all the while we're holding the uh, IOL complex with our micro-grasper. Now a Kuglin hook is used to uh, spread the iris and the pupil here and levitate the IOL into the anterior chamber. Um, the fusion line is kept on here, and the bottle height has been reduced slightly, and now the IOL has been brought into the, uh, in into the anterior uh, chamber. 
uh, once we have the uh, IOL in the anterior chamber, we can maneuver it and uh, inject further uh, myocol here to bring the pupil down. Uh, at this point, our retractomy has pretty well been completed, uh, and so we will use the myocol here to protect um, the um, anterior chamber, posterior chamber barrier. Some further dispersive viscoelastics is injected behind the IOL, and the incision is now opened up. This is a foldable lens. We could have cut the lens in the anterior chamber. However, we're going to be placing uh, a one-piece PMA artisan uh, iris claw lens, and so the incision is opened up. There's the IOL bag complex. Just make sure we irrigate any potential uh, residual tissue in the angle. And then we're going to perform uh, an iridectomy using a pair of micrograspers and micro scissors uh, to create a superior iridectomy to protect against pupil block, which is uh, a risk in these patients postoperatively. And the use of micro instruments is helpful to do this in a small incision manner. We're now ready for the uh, artisan iris claw lens. Uh, further pro cohesive viscoelastic is injected in the anterior chamber, and the artisan lens is placed through the 6 millimeter incision, and we immediately will suture this temporarily with tenon nylon using a 3 byte overlapping suture technique here. The suture is tied temporarily here. Uh, we will finalize it not after the IOL has been fixated. And it's important as well, as I mentioned earlier, to ensure that we keep an eye on the infusion. We lower the bottle height. We may stop the infusion for a certain period of time, uh, depending on what our needs are. To fixate the artisan lens, we have a micro tire on our left hand holding the optic. Well, a micro-grasper is used to grasp the uh, peripheral iris and pull the iris through the jaws of the iris uh, claw haptics. And the use of the micro-graspers can be used to split that uh, uh, iris uh, claw, allowing the iris to be drawn up through it. We'll do the same thing on the temporal side, grasping the iris and pulling it straight up through those claws. It's important to hold the eye well in the desired position to ensure it's fixed on the iris uh, in the appropriate location. We'll then ensure we have adequate fixation by maneuvering the IOL. And we can see here we've got a good uh, tuft of iris through that temporal haptic as well as the nasal side as well. At this point, we can lock our suture here and confirm uh, the closure by rotating the knot into the uh, cornea. We'll hydrate our uh, main corneal incisions. And we do all this work in the anterior chamber first prior to removing the uh, vitreous uh, infu the infusion line and the uh, pars plana uh, ports. Uh, further vitrectomy is performed here uh, just to ensure we have the place entirely clear of vitreous anteriorly and around the uh, ports. And um, at this point here, we're going to remove the chandelier light, pulling the uh, 25 gauge trocar out here while placing pressure posteriorly. Here we do the same thing with the infusion lines. We pull it out again, and uh, same with the cutter. And we pull the trocar through the cutter to uh, then cut on position two as we remove the uh, vitrectomy probe. These throtomies are self sealing, and the case is completed.